Last time, our heroes landed in an alien spaceship. The aliens speak reversed English, but I think it makes more sense that way than it does the regular way. Told you. These guys are operating under space order something or other, conducting a test raid on a certain primitive planet that we all know and don't seem to care that we're making uninhabitable for ourselves. We can't let them do it. Boy, you sure showed them. Resistance is impossible. You will be assimilated. Wait, that was... You know, I enjoy being able to span multiple generations of classic lines like that, but sometimes it does get a little confusing. Instead of trying to sort that out, let's look closely at something interesting about these aliens. You are now under restraint. You speak our language more fluently now. This was programmed on Alpha One for our use. Everything he does seems to go through that pistol-shaped thing he's holding. Who are these guys and what do they want with Earth? We come from a hungry planet where all protein was exhausted centuries ago. As a matter of survival, we raid other planets and extract the protein from them for our own people. Did you ever think about maybe trading for protein with these other planets? You have all this technology, there must be something useful on your planet that you could exchange for protein instead of being interplanetary pirates. What happens to these planets you raid? They don't concern us. Our only morality is survival. If necessary, when we leave the Earth, we will leave no life on it. See, here's why setting up a trade agreement would be much better than this. You leave a dead planet, you're never getting any more protein from it. If you work with the inhabitants and come up with a fair trade deal, you can keep getting protein from those planets for a very long time. This whole scenario just proves once again that technology and the wisdom to use it do not necessarily go hand in hand. As the control room watches, the aliens head toward a landing somewhere in Arizona. They still don't have a time fix. Have you located our primary test objective? No. I am scanning the terrain. What year is this? This is the Earth year 1885. Earlier, Tony said this. What do you suppose their plan of attack is going to be? I don't know. But I do know one thing, that somebody's air force is going to be swarming all over us as soon as we get in close. Or not. In the 1885 American West, the only thing somebody might have called an air force was a tornado. And I have doubts about that. They beamed down with Tony and Doug near a farmhouse. What's going on here? What kind of crackpots are you? Destroy him. No, wait. Destroy him and you destroy yourselves. Your programming isn't complete you know what kind of people you're up against. You start by killing, and these people will destroy everything they have before you can get to it. The alien relents, but says, you do need a demonstration of our power. More precisely, the power of that thing he carries. Without it, he's got zilch. He turns the knob the other way, and the fire goes backwards and goes out. Doug and Tony convinced the old boy to cooperate since the alternative is being like that barrel was a moment ago. That's your conditioning, isn't it? To kill anybody who gets in your way. We kill only when it is necessary. But he said they leave dead planets in their wake. So that's a nice bit of double talk this guy has managed to convince himself of. Their next objective is the nearby town of Mullins. You will go into that town to deliver an ultimatum. In one hour, unless a delegation of leaders comes here to meet with us, I will destroy part of that town. And if he's not back in two hours, they kill Doug and the rancher. He doesn't have much choice. Conveniently, there's a fully saddled horse just a few steps away, so here goes. This was Apache country and the renegades were causing all kinds of trouble for the settlers. That rancher told us that Apaches had stolen all his livestock, which happened a lot. Tony had better hope they don't make any trouble for him. 
In town, Tony is his usual diplomatic self. There's a ranch just north of here run by a tall, white-haired man. Uh, Jess Crawford. I know the place. It's been taken over by two raiders. Now, they're holding Crawford and a friend of mine. They've sent me here to bring back the leaders of the town. What do they want with us? They want the immediate surrender of this town. Otherwise, they're going to destroy part of it as proof of their powers. Now, these are not just two men. They're supernatural creatures. Here's how you do this, Tony. When he says, what do they want with us? You say, they told me they'd explain it when you get there. Then you let him go see for himself what he's dealing with. And they're not supernatural. They have technology that is beyond ours. There's nothing supernatural about that. The sheriff says, first, you're crazy. Second, keep your mouth shut and do not panic this town or I'll toss you in my jail. Tensions are already high because of the Apache threat. And there's exactly one company of cavalry nearby to protect the town. That's not much. So he doesn't need some nut going around screaming about supernatural monsters. The gang in the control room can't find any record of a UFO sighting or mysterious happenings around Mullins, Arizona in 1885. They can't figure out why. Tony has gone to the saloon to try and raise a posse of sorts. I need some men to go with me to the Crawford Ranch. He's in trouble. The Apaches? No, that. A portion of the town is on fire. Luckily, the sheriff is right on top of things. Freeze, mister. I don't know what kind of game you're playing, but it's over now. Look, Sheriff, I'm not playing any game. And neither are those aliens. You can see that for yourself. And we'd better get to the Crawford Ranch before they kill those two men. You're not going any place. Granted, they're all the wrong things, but he's on top of things. I have control. Report Alpha One. Primary test base. Established. Secondary test base. Under attack. Your test will be completed within eight hours. You will then report landing coordinates to the rest of the raiding fleet. I wonder if they're capable of going to the water closet without that thing. Doug has figured that out, and he's working on a plan with Mr. Crawford to get it away and destroy it. That shot is supposed to distract at least one of them. Doug is around the side of the house with a big rock, ready to bean the one with the gun thing. He told Crawford to stay inside and stall for time. Mr. Crawford may not have caught that part. Mr. Crawford should have caught that part. The human is very resourceful. We can use him. Yes. It's time to change him. You don't need to change him. He's been potty trained for years now. The jail is still standing. It's part of the Mullins Ghost Town National Monument. Ghost Town? Yes. It was abandoned in 1885. Completely deserted for no apparent reason. Because they were kidnapped by aliens? It sounds mad. But it would explain it. Perhaps that's why there was never a report from there about unidentified flying objects. I have the feeling we're about to see that mystery solved. Oh, this could do it. We can locate the jail geographically. And all we have to do is hope that Tony will stay put until we can get him out. Staying put isn't Tony's strongest virtue. He convinces the deputy that he's a reporter for a paper that the deputy just happens to be reading. He says, I'm here to cover the Apache scare. How about you tell me the details and I can write them down? but I'll need a pencil and some paper. My name's Sam. Sam Cole. There ain't a chance in the world you're spelling that wrong. You can count on me. And that there is called a chokehold. Not much chance of spelling that wrong either. Let it drop. I said drop it. Let's go. You're coming with me. What's the point? You can get away by yourself. I need you. We have a long ride ahead of us, Sheriff. Apparently nobody sees them mount their horses and ride out. Or maybe they're used to seeing the Sheriff ride off with somebody holding a gun on him. Sheriff's a hostage? Nice to know there's things you can count on. Wait a minute. Mr. 
I don't think you're going to have a chance to show me anything. Let's have a look at this. Remember that one company of cavalry standing between the Apaches and the town? <laughs> Yeah, there's one less now. The town is defenseless. All right, hold it right there. Get in good with the aliens and they might take care of your Apache problem, Sheriff. Those Apaches are made of protein. <laughs> then again, so are you. Mister, you can shoot me if you want. But if you do, you're gonna bring every one of those Indians right down on top of both of us. You're coming back to the Crawford Ranch with me. No, I'm not. There's nobody protecting that town now. And I'm not gonna see it overrun by a bunch of Apaches that go riding cross country with a madman. Knock him out with the rifle and sling him over his horse. No, Tony lets him go. He reports his failure and they say, you'll come with us to help convince them. And what about Doug? They are not the evil creatures we thought they were. Doug, you should see what they've done to that town. They gave them warning first. What's the matter with you? You will stand here. I didn't know you could control someone's mind by drawing three dots with a sharpie behind their ear. Gonna have to try that someday. <laughs> Has anyone ever done a compilation of Irwin Allen's explosions? A commenter recently said he was the predecessor to Michael Bay. I think they're correct. We slaughtered the cavalry, I tell you. I saw it. The cavalry provoked them. You all know that. We fight, they'll slaughter us too. But if we're reasonable, we get what they want. We're... Tony didn't think that thing they call a projector could protect them from bullets? And now that they wish that guy away to the cornfield, they have the townspeople's attention. Who is in command here? I'm the sheriff here. You will be wise to cooperate with him, Sheriff. Johnson drew on them first, that's a fact. Shut up, Williams. Williams the bartender is our local coward. Before the aliens appeared, he was talking about trying to appease the Apaches and give them whatever they want. Now he'll do the same thing with these guys. Maybe if he cooperates, they'll help him grow a real mustache. They set the town to gathering all the protein within 10 miles and piling it in the street so they can beam it up later. Yeah, that's everything I have. I told you I'd cooperate, but the proof's in the pudding, as I always say. It's all there, everything complete. Methinks the dude doth protest too much. Is he telling the truth? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, he's lying. He's lying. He's... No, no. He definitely doth protest too much. Please, I'm cooperating with you. You can see that, but leave me something. And what about the rest of the people, Williams? It doesn't matter what they do to anybody else as long as he gets to survive and they leave him something. Please incinerate this guy before I do. Oops. You broke it. When the aliens realized they pushed the wrong button and destroyed it all, they flew into a panic, unsure what to do. When they got sufficiently weak from hunger, the townspeople were able to overpower them. The aliens got very familiar with the sheriff's jail, where instead of protein, they learned to live on potatoes and gravy. You're running out, Sheriff? You know, I thought you were crazy before, mister. I gotta apologize to you for that. Indians are one thing, but these, these creatures, they're another thing. There's nothing I can do about them here. I figured if I could get to Tucson, send a wire to Fort Whipple, I might get the army after him. It'll be too late by then. They keep gaining strength. They keep making more and more people like Doug. By the time the army got there, they'd either be fighting the whole town, or all the people would be dead with all the protein sucked out of their bodies. I'm not sure. But I think that, that thing they carry keeps supplying power for them. What we have to do is find a way to get to it and destroy it. Can the two of us do it? No, it'll take three. 
Did either of you notice the way he was walking? They aren't gonna harm us. You put that rifle down. Watch out! I'll bet they noticed now. When he runs out of bullets, they work together and subdue him. You were right. They gotta be stopped now. We still need a third man. We'll get one. One thing about your friend. If it comes down to the town or him, what do you do? The aliens have to be stopped. So if it comes down to it, we'll punch him out like we did this guy. Is that what you're saying? Is this the last of the herds? Yes. We will have them placed in the proper coordinates. Those proper coordinates are in the middle of town. This should be interesting. I don't know, Sheriff. I agree with you. Something's got to be done, but why me? You've got no choice. None of us do. I have to agree with Williams. He is not the one to do this. He's already proven he's not trustworthy and that he'll roll over for anybody who threatens to do him bodily harm. If you're going to trust him to be your lookout, I foresee trouble. Do you have any food? What? Look, I need a reason for talking to the alien. I got a week's supply of dried beef. Okay, that'll do. And remember, when I get the alien away from that machine, you fire at us through the saloon window. Can it be destroyed? We'll soon find out. Williams is supposed to fire a warning shot if he sees the other alien coming. Everybody knows their assignments. Let's go save the world. While Tony is telling the alien about more food, William sees the other alien and Doug coming. What do you want? I can save you a lot of trouble, that's what I can do. But what I figure is one good turn always deserves another. I don't like having to say it, but told you. He tells them everything, and for his trouble he earns their disgust. They walk away and leave him whimpering like an animal in the street. Smash it on the floor, or hold it out and have the sheriff shoot it. However you do it, break that thing! Now you restore everyone to their original condition. That cannot be done without the projector. Return the projector to me, and I will satisfy your demands. Smash that thing! Well, that's a letdown. When they transfer to Earth or transport a bunch of cargo, we get an explosion the size of the whole room. But when the thing that makes it all work breaks, we get a little pfft. Erwin Allen, what were you thinking? Doug is himself again, and the aliens seem a little lost. Yeah. They've lost the power. They're probably being brought back to the spaceship. Fortunately, I have my own little translation circuit here. And voila. The ships have got no maybe a warp. We have studied Earth from a has been located. Oh, no, it's vulnerable point. You exist only as a convenience. Hi. What we learn from that is their language consists of something like six phrases and they have to use those to communicate pretty much everything. No wonder their home planet is such a mess. Tug's all right. And the battle's over. We'll try for a transfer. We knew something else was going to happen. There's still eight minutes of runtime left. What do you want here? We come in peace to investigate the disappearance of one of our spaceships during Earth year 1885 while on your planet. We have received a signal from your time machine that you have located it. We demand your cooperation. You'll get a lot further with Earth people if you request, dude. We don't take kindly to demands, even from guys who think aluminum foil is the latest fashion. Computers ancient. 
data processors primitive, molecular electronics entering elementary stage, time control, early development. And yet not only does it work, but it located your ship when you couldn't. Maybe you should take the arrogance down a notch. If our spaceship was destroyed on this planet, this planet will be destroyed. We didn't destroy it. We had nothing to do with its coming or going. The last we saw of your two beings, they were returning to their ship. Prove this to us now. Prove it. We've told you the truth. They keep saying, how can we prove it to you when we all know they can just wind the view screen back a few minutes and let him see for himself? And eventually that's what they do. He says, okay, I'm satisfied and leaves. He does tell them that they no longer need materials from primitive planets. So I guess now they just travel around the galaxy acting like jerks and bullies. Somebody find them a better hobby. And now we get the answer to the mystery Anne uncovered about the town. I'm clearing out of here just like everybody else. As far as I'm concerned, Mullins, Arizona is a ghost town. You're going to make a report of what happened, aren't you? And have them call me local? No, sir. I'm not going to spoil my chances of getting another job. If I was in the position of anybody in that town, including him, I'd do the same thing. Let it be a mystery. That's better than getting locked up in a loony bin. Our time travelers depart right on cue. Looks like World War I equipment. The Alps, Northern Italy or Austria. Let's get out of here. There's a villa nearby and they take refuge in the cellar. <laughs> refuge may have been too strong a word, but that explosion uncovered something. Next episode is called The Ghost of Nero. Because space aliens wasn't enough, now we have to have ghosts. I'm not sure how or why we went so far off the rails, but it won't stop with a ghost. Among other things, the tunnel will go a little off the rails itself and start doing things even weirder than bringing the wrong people to the 20th century, and we'll meet God. But we'll also run into Billy the Kid, some Barbary Coast pirates, and several other interesting characters, so it wasn't all crazy. We just seem to be in a cluster of it right at the moment. I promise I'll get us out as quickly as I can.